today, so today my talk is focused on arm swing during human walking uh, with an emphasis on exploring the uh, active and passive contributions to what I termed a, a hybrid system. So uh, till today, um, controversy exists as to the underlying mechanism that produces arm swing motion. So if you look back from the early to mid-1900s, some prominent uh, biomechanists uh, suggested that arm swing uh, was a result of muscle forces. <coughs> Whereas on the other hand, uh, Chadman and Ralston suggested that arms behave as passive uh, pendulums. Now more recently, in 2009, there are two interesting studies uh, investigating arm swing, and they both came up with a pretty similar conclusion, suggesting that uh, arm swing motion might be the result of uh, passive dynamics. <clears throat> now in light of this controversy, we asked the question, is arm swing motion driven by muscle forces, a passive pendulum response to the acceleration of the body, or perhaps some combination? So first, uh, we hypothesize that uh, if arm swing results from passive pendulum motion, then the biological arm should swing without the need for shoulder uh, muscular activation. Now we've tested this first uh, hypothesis by asking people to walk on a, on a treadmill while we measure uh, EMG activity um, in the anterior and posterior deltoid, while at the same time measuring arm swinging angles by using reflective markers placed on the right arm. <clears throat> as well as the leg. Now we took the marker data and estimated the position of the biological arm center of mass relative to a, uh, a reference uh, a horizontal axis. Now secondly, we, we hypothesized that if arm swing motion results from passive pendulum, that the swinging amplitudes of anthropomorphic <coughs> passive mechanical arms should swing with similar amplitudes to that of biological arms. Now we took a similar approach as Collins from 2009 and we built um, <clears throat> passive mechanical arms that had similar inertial characteristics as each subject's biological arm. So essentially we attached mass at the end of the aluminum bar and then we adjusted the position uh, relative to the pivot point. And then similarly before, we placed reflective markers at the hitch's joint, the middle of the bar, and at the end of the lead mass so that we can measure arm swing uh, amplitudes while subjects walk with our passive mechanical arm swing device. So for this study, we had 13 subjects, all walking at a fixed speed of 1.25 meters per second. We had two sets of conditions where they walked with their biological arms, and then the other set of conditions is, uh, where they wore our passive arm swing device. <clears throat> and we asked them to walk a range of step frequencies. So here we denoted 100% as the subject's actual uh, or preferred step frequency, and they uh, walked at faster and faster, uh, or slower and slower step frequencies, up to a range of 130% to uh, 70%. So let me show you some results from our biological arm swing experiments. Here I have the preferred step, fre step, uh, preferred step frequency condition. Uh, here I have a, just a simple animation. The blue lines here denotes the right side of the body. Uh, the little red uh, dot uh, denotes the position of the biological arm center of mass. Here on top I have the uh, amplitude of the arm swing, the uh, EMG activity of the posterior and delta, uh, anterior deltoid. So obviously you can see that during arm swing, there's uh, EMG activation at, at the posterior deltoid, but interestingly we see that the anterior deltoid remains relatively silent. <coughs> we, we asked subjects to walk at the fastest uh, step frequency of 130%. Again here they're maintaining a fixed speed, but taking very fast steps. <clears throat> we see the increasing uh, frequency of arm swing, but the amplitude has slightly decreased. We see an uh, increase in the posterior uh, deltoid activity, uh, while again the anterior deltoid remains relatively silent, suggesting that the forward motion of the arm is actually under passive dynamics. Now if we look at the slowest step frequency, here again they're going to walk at the same speed but taking really long steps now. <clears throat> We see a dramatic increase in the amplitude of arm swing. We so also see an increase in the posterior uh, deltoid EMG activity. Now we also see burst of the anterior deltoid while walking, suggesting now that the forward motion is actually under some neural control. So let's, let's look at the average trends across conditions here. Um, here I have <coughs> the posterior deltoid EMG amplitude normalized uh, to a value of one at their preferred step uh, frequency condition. The same here for the anterior deltoid. 
and we see that uh, walking at either faster or slower step frequencies, there's an increase in the posterior deltoid activity. While on the other hand, the anterior deltoid remains relatively silent at these faster step frequencies, and then tends to increase at these slow step frequencies. Now let's compare the cases for our biological um, and our passing mechanical arms. Here we're gonna have a the preferred step frequency, step frequency condition. Um, on the left, I have biological arm swing case, and then on the right, I have the uh, passing mechanical arms. And the bottom, you'll see the change in the amplitude of arm swing. So we can clearly see that the amplitude of uh, biological arm swing uh, exceeds that of the passive mechanical arms. Let's look at the fastest step frequency. Again, we see that the biological arms swing faster at a faster frequency. Um, but it's decreased its amplitude a little bit, but still exceeds that of the passive mechanical arms. Now in our most interesting case, at the slowest preferred step frequency, or slowest step frequency, again taking very long steps, we see an increase in the amplitude of biological arm swing. Now what's interesting, we also see an increase in the amplitude of the passive mechanical arms, but it's still less than what we find for the biological arms. So let's look at the average trends here. Um, we have arm swing amplitude in degrees. Uh, here, the average amplitude of biological arms at the preferred was about uh, 26 degrees. And this study decreased at faster step frequencies and then tends to increase radically at these slowest step frequencies. Um, let's look at the case for the passive mechanical arms. In general, we find that the amplitudes were uh, less than biological arms at the um, preferred step frequency. This was about 10 degrees. It remained relatively the same at these faster step frequencies, and then slowly increased dramatically uh, at these very slow step frequencies. Now, uh, at this point, I became very curious as to why this was happening. Why, uh, so I wanted to find a possible explanation uh, as to why the swinging amplitudes of our passive mechanical arms uh, did not match the swinging uh, amplitudes of the biological arms. And so my next approach was trying to uh, see if I could make some predictions uh, about the arm swing amplitudes by treating the arms as a horizontally driven pendulum. So I'm gonna first explain some resident diagrams. Um, here we have uh, the amplitudes on the vertical as a function of the forcing frequency uh, relative or normalized to the natural frequency of the of a simple pendulum. So essentially, if we take a pendulum and we apply a driving force at its pivot, we can excite the swing amplitudes of that pendulum um, across these different frequencies. Now for the case where the force of frequency is zero, the pivot just stays still in space and it doesn't excite the swinging pendulum. So we have zero amplitude. Now we suddenly increase the force of frequency about the pivot um, uh, up until it coincides with the natural frequency of the biological arm, we get relatively, we get very uh, high amplitudes. Now if we tend to increase it further and further, we'll get to the point where the force of frequency is so fast that the mass will essentially just stay still uh, in space, causing very small amplitudes. Now, um, so I wanted to put this in the context of, of human walking, and I essentially treated our step frequency as the driving frequency at the shoulder, because when we walk, it's gonna cause forward translation of the uh, shoulder joint. And what I find is that uh, when we make these comparisons, we find that the, on average, the preferred step frequency of our human subjects uh, was about 1.74, while our, the natural frequency of our biological arms was 0.81 hertz. And we find that this ratio is pretty large, suggesting that perhaps the preferred step frequency is too fast to generate uh, very large arm swinging amplitudes of biological arms. Now let's put this in the, in the context of, of comparing our experimental biological arm swing data versus uh, the predictions from a horizontally driven pendulum. So again, we have arm swing amplitude in degrees. One more slide. Um, as a function of frequency, here again I'm showing in the solid circles our experimental data. And here I have the predictions from a, a horizontally driven pendulum, which underestimates the swinging amplitudes. Now what happens is we compare the predictions um, using our passive arm swing uh, mechanical data. Essentially we have the uh, closed boxes here, that's our experimental data, and then based on uh, certain parameters that we input to the equations of motion, we find that the predictions match pretty well with the swinging amplitudes of our passive uh, mechanical arms. 
Now what's pretty interesting about this curve is that you see that the trend um, here as we walk with slower and slower step frequencies that tend toward the uh, natural frequency of the biological arms that excites the mean amplitudes, similar to what you would find in a you know, residence diagram here. So in conclusion, um, we find that uh, biological arms do indeed uh, swing with shoulder muscular actuation. Uh, we also find that um, our anthropomorphic passive mechanical arms uh, swung with uh, lesser amplitudes than our biological arms. But we do find that there is some passive dynamics within the system, especially in the forward direction. So that's it for my talk. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions. Thanks. Yes? You were trying just changing the passive dynamics of your, your biological arm, like getting hang away from your hand. Change the natural frequency of your arm. Oh, that's a, that's a good, uh, good point. We have not tried that yet. So that's something to, to think about in the future. So it definitely would change the, the dynamics. Um, the mass itself wouldn't have a large role, um, especially if you're dealing with the ideal pendulum. But if you start talking about friction and things like that, then it could, it could definitely change the amplitudes of a, 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 a force pendulum. So. Yes, Hug? Uh, so who has hypothesized that arm swinging results from purely passive pendulum motion? Um, well, most of the like, literature, like Ralston or Chapman and Ralston, if you look back to the old literature, they considered that as just purely passive pendulums. Um, and some of the conclusions they made were based on when they compared metabolic data. So they had people um, that had their arms bounded to the side and compared that to walking with just arms freely, uh, there was no change in the metabolic cost. So um, their conclusion was that the arms just behave as passive pendulums um, that are just caused by acceleration of the, of the shoulder joint. You, you don't agree? Or, so you don't, you don't agree with the Chapman and Rostin uh, study? Or? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I just want to get a clarification on the last graph you showed. Sure. Um, so you you match the, the artificial arms to be the same inertia as the yeah. Know, the, and so the the theoretical prediction I'm a little confused because it looks like it, it dips up, but I thought the curve should always be decent, decreasing. So which one are you first? Is it the right one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So why is the theoretical prediction? Is there a difference in the amplitude of the excitation? Oh, you're playing in the actual, uh, the prediction is based on playing in the actual kinematic movement of the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, so I, I took the, 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 the amplitude of the, of the horizontal marker, or the shoulder marker, and looked at the amplitude driven in the horizontal day yes, I see, yeah. I see, see, see. And also you input the frequency uh, that the person's walking at. So it's, it's kind of a, it's only a 2D, there's a, but there's two, essentially two parameters that you input. It's the uh, frequency and then also the amplitude of the shoulder. Uh, relative amplitude, it's the absolute amplitude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Hi. Uh, I like your resonance diagrams as a way of thinking about this, yeah. and it's kind of the natural way to think about a pendulum at different frequencies. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it seems that with your natural frequency mismatch so badly to the, to the step frequency, uh, your interpretation is correct about the role of, of the uh, ankle muscles in doing something here. Uh, what I want to know is, did the phasing of the posterior and anterior deltoid uh, EMG change when you went below and above the preferred step frequency? Yeah, so we started to see uh, at the slowest step frequency that the anterior deltoid became active. And usually we found alternating bursts uh, between the, the posterior and anterior. Um, I, I couldn't go into too much into detail, um, but uh, you did find that, that alternating burst between the posterior and anterior. Is that what you're asking? Or? What I was really interested in is particularly if the timing changes, because it seems like driving, you know, one way might be driving them faster, one way might be driving them slower, and that would basically require EMGs at opposite timing. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. No, I have not done that type of analysis, but that would be interesting. I haven't done a, 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 more, a more detailed timing type of uh, analysis. Yeah. Um, uh, over here? Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, if the swinging of the arms is under neural control or active control. That's a pretty strong indication it plays some sort of functional role. Uh -huh. uh, do you or does anybody have any kind of guess about what that functional role might be? Um, well, in terms of mechanics, I know um, there's been several studies by Elfman and Henriks to talk about that arm swing helps to counteract the um, angle momentum of the swinging legs. So mechanically, it has it as a, as a function. Um, so does that, does that answer your, your yeah. question? Yeah. 
can make maybe somebody else has an answer to that. But sure. Just wondering. I mean, you make a strong distinction between passive and active, but I mean, the, the narrow identity is changing the, the, the ingredients of the <coughs> If you would describe it as active, but I don't think that it should be such a crisp distinction about it. Because the problem is that it adapts to better match the ingredients of the string or the article. Yeah. Well, I, I guess, you know, I, I really don't want to try to distinguish between passive and active, but. I guess I try to think about it as, as kind of an interesting, um, uh, an interesting relation between um, active and passive dynamics. So how, how they kind of uh, interact with one another. You know, so I mean, it would be best, right, to take advantage of these, uh, these passive dynamics instead of just trying to control every part of Armstrong during walking. So. One more question. Yes. Yeah, so it's something, it's a, it's a very simple approach. So, um, you know, I, I did not include any type of transverse rotations or, or any vertical oscillations, but that, that would definitely uh, uh, play a role. Um, but it, it seems like it's pretty good. It's a simple model, but it's pretty good at making some pretty good predictions based on just the horizontal uh, forcing uh, of the arm. Even in the full simulation, is it only horizontal forcing? Uh, the, yes, yeah, I see. So it's just taking the marker data and just plotting the satchel plane kinematics. I see. And so, so, so there's a famous uh, thing about pen pendulas, it's the vertical support vibration where the uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can normal possibly. thing is unstable and, and you go to a thing, yeah. Uh, oscillation. And yeah, there's, and there's also, you know, the equation of motion that you can you know, look at how a circular motion or, you know, applying some kind of circular motion to a certain point affects the swing amplitude. So. Thanks.